right. Welcome to our third and final review of the evening. Um, a game called Frost Runner. So, um, Frost Runner is a first person platforming game. Uh, we have actually covered a few of these in the past um, because it is a first person platformer um, with emphasis on speedrunning. And also worth mentioning, this is a student project. Um, it comes from an institution called the SMU Guildhall, which is apparently the world's first um, graduate program for video games. Well, I suppose that explains at least one of the reasons why they're ignoring all of the advice from everyone that nobody likes platforming in first person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like... I mean, I'm biased, but I'm pretty sure that's a popular opinion. Um, like, Galix did not have good uh, good tidings to this game. Granted, okay, I did not have good tidings to this game either because um, I don't particularly care for first person jumping either. But what really killed this game for me was the lack of customizable control. Um, I am left handed. I do not use wads. Um, that is an uh, that is just too awkward for me to. Um, properly utilized, especially in an uh, action-oriented game like this, you know, where, where speed and precision are really necessary. I got through the tutorial, I can say that. I didn't get much farther because my hands started cramping up. Mm. Yeah, I've had this problem with other games. It's like... Mm. Re and what's really weird is they almost had it. Um... Because the um, arrow keys, forward and backwards, move you forward and backwards. The problem is the left and right keys don't move you left and right. I don't know why this is, but it is, and it's mm. terrible. You can kind of turn with the mouse, at least. Yeah, you can kind of turn, but you were very clearly designed to turn and move with the, with, with the full range of keys and the mouse, like how it usually works. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I'm not going to lie, I was mostly turning by mouse looking. Fair, uh, fair enough. I mean, that, that's how modern game. that's how, like, um, first-person games have worked since, like, the late 90s. Uh-huh. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's more like moving in air and shit. Like, like trust me, you, you, need the, the, you need the left and right keys. Oh, yeah. To... to to, to, yeah, that would that would have if I, if I could have done that competently, then yeah, that would have helped with some of the slipping problems I was having probably. Yeah. Anyway, um, so others uh, like uh, others are gonna have to talk about this game in more detail because um, once again, I I did not uh, I was not able physically unable to um, play this game for very long. So what like, you got is you got forward back, strafe left, strafe right, look mm. left, look right with the mouse, and look up and down. And then you can, like, click to tether, and on the default thing, your tether is pretty short, and you only get three of them, I think. And tether doesn't even come into it until a good ways in. Uh, but, yeah. So that's on the normal mode. There is also an easy mode of the or an easy mode of this game that it specifically says is not how it's meant to be played. That gives you double jumps and infinite tether range and uh, or longer tether range and infinite number of tethers, which uh, is probably significantly easier. But because they said that's not how it's intended to be, uh, I didn't do that. Even though I'm terrible at this kind of game because I don't like games that make me feel bad. For trying to play in a way that would make you more comfortable. I mean, is that most games though? Uh, not Celeste. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, um, so in keeping with the with name, the like the big gimmick here is ice physics. Yeah, everything looks cold even before you get to the ice part, but then there's ice. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, the game looks good. 
which is yeah. why it says its system requirements are so high. They're not actually as high as it says they are. Yeah, but, I, no, I'm yeah. having some freeze up because I'm trying to game capture, but without that, I was running fine on high. Yeah, I was running fine on high too, but yeah, probably having much more trouble than Petty Fan is right now. <laughs> Like, yeah, the as the name is, and I've already said there's ice physics involved, and there's also inertia involved as well. Yeah, even on the non icy stuff, you have to be careful with your jumps because uh, you do carry over inertia when you land and stuff, which can be tricky when you need to change directions rapidly. Damn you, actual Newtonian physics! <laughs> or reasonable facts, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it's bad. It's just not something I'm good at, and also something not something that I enjoy super much. Yeah. Right. I this is one of you, be, you beat the game, so you have more insight onto later on. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, that they add. Yeah. Um, the uh, levels um, themselves are called the uh, first starting off of prologue, where you. It was basically the, the tutorial set of levels. Then there's Ring, Ice, Tether, Flame, and Chain. Ring is uh, what, uh, what Petty Fan was playing through here. This a is while still now. a ring stage. Oh, yeah. The yeah, ring, the ring stages now. just cover the rings that, when you pass through them, ch ch trigger things in the stage to move. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're the basically the like most hand set is. Yeah, lots of platforming here. <laughs> and of course, the next set of levels is um, ice, as it, which uh, it involves the ice physics, where you pretty much slide through um, platforms of ice and have to make some jumps here and there. Now, does it make the jumping harder? Because this is a thing where, like, you it jump. makes everything harder. It does. Because this game definitely does the thing where you, if you want to get the maximum jump distance, you really need to hold the jump button the whole time. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But You'll be going down hills off some and ice slopes. and. Because <laughs> yeah. the, the ice problem, at least for me, is, like, I, it's yeah. fine that they don't give you a lot of control, but you have like next to nothing. Yeah, as soon as you start to go in one direction, you better hope that you lose momentum if you need to go somewhere else. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, the next set of levels is Tether, and that's where you start using your um, Tether. It's just and Super Metroid Grapple Beam, where you aim with the mouse and click with the mouse to fire it. Yeah, yeah, and if you basically. um jump while you're flying, you can fling and go farther. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you learned that in the in the fling stages. <laughs> but it still works in the tether stage because they don't limit your thing. Yeah, and then chain is the last set of levels. Which is a combination of everything that you've done <laughs> mm -hmm. in the previous ones. So this is not a very long game, then. No, no, it is not. No, it's not. Thirty-six yeah. stages in all. And uh, oh, really? throughout these stages, you hmm? you gonna say something, Adam? No. Oh, I thought he was gonna say something. Um. Yeah. In all these stages, you will find uh, collectibles. Which are, I want to say, film projectors, kind of, or devices know, so of so, they're devices of some kind, and you get those. They make me think of film projectors. <laughs> they do look kind of like they have a dual reel thing going on. Yeah. But yeah, it says you get those to unlock the lunatic difficulty for the stage they're in. Yeah, insanity. Yeah, which um, yeah, collecting all those in each of the set of stages will give you access to. An insanity um, stage, which is everything that you've done 
but the difficulty has turned up to 11, basically. Because <laughs> mm. some of and, those, um, some of those are pretty easy to find, but some of them are not. Yeah, I never did find them all that hard to find, but yeah, they can be difficult at some points. And like, I um, guess it should mention that timer that's ticking down, like when yeah, I start you a level. Yeah, very long. Well, I, that's the par timer. You can take as long as you need. That's just for par. Yeah. Okay, yeah. The par, the par speed is pretty low for these then. Or pretty fast. Par time is pretty low. Yeah. Of course, once you complete a stage, and if you get a best new um, time um, rest stage that's below the par, then you can try again to see if you can beat that. Mm -hmm. And you also be racing a, a, speed a, a ghost, thing. basically. Huh? This is very much yeah, a, a speed, speed runner. Yeah. There's a leaderboard. <laughs> yep. Like, I don't know if we'd see this at GDQ, but like, some speedrunners can probably have some fun with this, at least for a bit. Mm -hmm. There's certainly a lot of, like, memorizing and deciding optimal routes because there are multiple ways of solving some of the problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's, not, sure there's not always just one possible path. Sometimes there's one hard path and one not as hard path. Yeah. Like, as far as story, there isn't one, as far as I can tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think this game has uh, less story than Sayum did. <laughs> Yeah, you're basically had. a yeah. yeah basically you're a nondescript of um female character who's going through a gauntlet of horses for some unknown reason <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah there isn't really much of a story in the um theme page Apparently this should take a 15-week yeah. development cycle, though, so get on them for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, as a student project, it's pretty good, actually. It is. Oh, yeah, it looks good. It plays fairly smoothly. You know, for, mm. what, for what it is. Yeah. And... Uh. You know, it is free as well, so... Yeah, that's... Mm -hmm. You can't... Like, if, if you're interested in first-person platforming, you definitely, I guess, there are certainly worse games to check out, because... I'd suggest probably looking at this before you jumped into something like Sayum. Because with yeah, this yeah. being free, if you, if you like this kind of thing, you'll be more inclined to enjoy something like Sayum. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then again, if you utterly hate this, then you might not enjoy it. Because they yeah, share, they enjoy share it. many, many similar mechanic things. They don't control quite the same, but they're close enough mechanically you can get a feel on whether or not you'll like the other one. Uh huh. Yeah, if you enjoyed something that I would say like Mirror's Edge, you'd enjoy this. Yeah, that's another one. Though Mirror's Edge is a lot more um, frenetic than this, though. Like, yeah. you don't it, have it, an it option. It has longer continuous experiences instead of just being stage. Well, not only well, that, but you have the option to save yourself by climbing up a ledge. Mm -hmm. In this, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. I mean, that kind of makes sense, since, you know, Mirror's Edge was a... Um, is a AAA uh, video game. Uh, granted, it was... Uh, last gen but still like, this is a you know the, the first the first person platformers we encounter these days you know they're indie games or they are um student projects you know the other one we reviewed was uh toki time trial mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that was one that actually allowed you to see your feet you don't you know? you'll never realize how f useful that is until you play something like this uh-huh yes <laughs> Yes. Seeing um, feet is nice. Yeah, especially since some of the hard paths involve pretty small platforms. Yep. 
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you want to really go to the golden age of first person jumping, that's the 90s. Because uh-huh. for whatever reason, the, the ju- jumping, jumping puzzles, ju- just jumping precision platforming was a thing in the 90s. I feel like, excuse me, I'm going to go have my jumping flash, flash back, flashbacks now. <laughs> for me, it's always Turok. <laughs> uh, it's like uh, the, the, yeah. the Turok games had the, this. But, but this is a different thing. This is very modern because it's um, based around very short stages. The platforming is the point. Um, yep. And, and speedrunning. Like, you know, speedrunning was so not a thing in the 90s. Or rather, not an intentional thing. Well, it wasn't clearly as big as it is now because recording your stuff was very hit or miss. Right. Um, anyway, as far as whether or not you should uh, get this game or not, um, if you're left-handed, then no. I'll say that right <laughs> Avoid now. Avoid like but... the plague. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you don't like games that don't have controller support at all. Like... I mean, I mm-hmm. guess theoretically you might be able to some extent to map buttons, but it's really designed for mouse and keyboard and does not have any built-in support for anything else. Right. Uh, it's like... Um, those caveats aside, this game is worth playing, I think. Uh, you know, it's like... Yeah, I say it is. Mm-hmm. Especially you know, as a good it's... kind of gateway if you want to try the first-person platformer genre. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's like, I mean, yeah, it's nowhere near as good as Seum, but you know that was a more that was a professional product. This is a student project. You know, th- there are different applications here. Um, anyway, so with that in mind, uh, any last words on Frostrunner here? Not that I can think of. Uh, Me neither. Any further complaints that I would make would perfect would entirely be because it's not to my taste, and I'm not going to knock it on that because it it seems pretty competent for what it is. It's just that what it is is not something I'm good at. Duly noted. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that'll about do it for this. Yeah, for this session. So, um, the week ahead. Um, once again, there is no Tuesday show. That, um, uh, not going to have a Tuesday show until next season. Um, though, with that in mind, on Wednesday, March 20th, we will be welcoming Alexander Clark and Brandon Heist of Starblazer VR. Uh, by that name, you can gather that, yeah, we're having another VR developer on the program. Oh, boy. V and all them ours. <laughs> yes, yes. Like, um, and they are, de- and their game is also named Starblazer, or, um, or that might be a different game. Um, no, I'm like, no, the, their name, their actual name might be different, or well, I don't know. There, there's some sort of discrepancy here. Like, it, it says like the developer publisher is Pro Two One Three One, but I've also seen Starblazer VR. That might be an older name. We'll um, try and get this. We're trying to get this cleared away before we have the uh, actually have them, have them on the program, so we can introduce them correctly. Yeah, I'm just like, mm-hmm. like, I'm just noting uh, diff- like different things. But it, you know, it, it's like I, the people are correct, which is the important part. Mm-hmm. And the game is called Star Blazer. Like, um. It's that, a, sounds, that sounds really familiar, but I don't yeah. know. Well, it's a real-time I... strategy VR game. That's um, an interesting combination. I think I heard of something that was like that before. Yeah. Um, we'll be talking more about that on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Um, so until then... I-